On Tuesday, Texas confirmed its first death of a person infected with monkeypox. The Department of State Health Services said the adult patient in Harris County was severely immunocompromised. Health investigators are trying to determine what role monkeypox played in the death. While case numbers continue to grow, deaths are rare. For context, reporter Maggie Glenn spoke with Dr. Gerald Parker. He heads up the Pandemic Policy Program at Texas A&M and gave us insight about efforts to track and fight the virus. Would you mind just kind of breaking down when people hear that the first death has officially been reported here in Texas, um, why that doesn't maybe necessarily mean we need to be the same level of concern we were with COVID, just kind of breaking down the, the differences between the two diseases. Well, Sherry, I mean, COVID was, you know, very transmissible as a respiratory virus. Monkeypox, on the other hand, is not a respiratory virus. It, it can transmit that away, but what we're seeing right now is it's primarily uh, over over 90%, almost 95% of the cases are occurring in, in the community with men having sex with men. And so it is right at the moment. That doesn't mean it's going to stay there, though. Um, and because it, it, it could do, it could be on, become more transmissible beyond just that community. And, and, um, uh, but it, it doesn't, it's not rapidly spread by the trans aerosol route that we had with COVID-19. And it's my understanding that it's not as lethal. Is that correct? It's, it's not, it's not very, it's not a very lethal disease. Now it is related to smallpox, which could be associated up to 30% lethality, but it's not smallpox. Yeah. Monkeypox does, does not have that high lethality, but it can cause very painful sores. I wanted to ask just what we could kind of learn from looking at our response to COVID-19 and see kind of what tools we can draw from in our response there to respond to the current outbreak of monkeypox. Sure. And, you know, on, on the one hand, I think um, we have been able to apply some lessons learned from COVID-19 response. But on the other hand, I think um, we've only been able to observe some lessons and not really apply some of the things that we should have learned from COVID-19. And I would say the first thing is testing. I think we dropped the ball nationally with, te with testing and just not making it readily available quick enough. You know, it's getting better now, um, but uh, I think, and, and we had the same problem with COVID-19 very early on with some of the stumbles and in, in, in testing. I think we're actually, I think most don't realize we're very lucky, not lucky. Um, we worked very hard over the last 20 years to make sure that we had a, a vaccine available actually for smallpox because we were worried about smallpox and a potential bioterror attack. And that's the vaccine Genios that was is produced by Bavarian Nordic. And now is the vaccine that is being used for monkeypox and to try to uh, control the, the outbreak of monkeypox. So um, I think we can thank some of our investments over the last 20 years in, in public health preparedness that is the reason and rationale we even have a vaccine available today for for this unusual outbreak that occurred. What do you think going forward, the best way the state can actually keep track of these uh, you know, outbreaks would be? One thing that we really need to start doing, not only for monkeypox, for all emerging infectious diseases, I, I think COVID-19 did tell us wastewater surveillance is actually really, really good and a novel, it sounds simple, but it's extremely novel approach uh, to do genomic surveillance of, of wastewater. And, and certainly we need to turn the, the, the gain up for, for that in, in monkeypox and, and other, other um, infectious diseases as well. You heard Dr. Parker mention that the vaccine now being used to fight monkeypox was originally developed to battle smallpox. An antiviral medication to combat smallpox is also being used to treat some monkeypox patients. A battle on the airwaves to win support from Texas women. The anger in particular tends to people, get people you know, raring to go, excited to get out there and vote. We dig deeper into the strategy that could decide the race for governor and hear from people on both sides shaping the messages. Criminals hiding their crimes by using fake paper license plates are changing how they operate, the steps they're taking, and the warning police have for car owners. 